Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my painting, The Path Home at Tamanand Park. For this painting, I began very spontaneously spraying water, touching color in, and I started to pull out a structure of this lovely local park where we took a walk and I took a photograph. As the painting evolved, it began to need more structure than the watercolor was giving it, so I ended up doing an ink drawing on top of the watercolor. I hope you'll enjoy this demonstration and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. Starting a new painting, and I had a photograph I'd taken with a composition that seemed to work very nicely, yet the colors were sort of drab. So I decided I was going to add my own colors and use the composition from a local park called Tamanand Park. I sprayed down the top of the painting with water and now I'm dropping dots and dots of color, concentrated pigment into those droplets of water that I sprayed on. The droplets of water spread out the paint in an interesting manner where I can achieve an impressionistic type of approach. Or one might almost say pointillistic, but it's fun and allows me to start out very free and loose just to see where it goes and what I can do next. This is an older stone structure in this park. And there are many beautiful paths and beautiful trees all through the park to walk and enjoy all kinds of wildlife. It's a really nice park and it's only about 10 minutes from my home. But I'm lucky to live in an area with lots of really nice places to walk and take photographs. And those photographs give me the ideas for many of my paintings. I'm using subdued colors sort of on the fall side for the background. And in the foreground, the path comes toward the viewer as the viewer walks on home from a lovely stroll in the park, up and down the hills, down to a creek. Again, I've sprayed the foreground here so I'm working on a wet surface that's very dotted with water droplets. So applying the paint allows the paint to spread out nicely when it's working on a wet surface. It also allows it to go into unexpected places. I splatter, I drop, do whatever it takes to get the paint on there, and then allow it to mix right on the paper. You can see I'm using a lot of burnt sienna in the foreground. You can also see where I've left light areas for the trees so that I can use shading on them later. Because there were some strong shadows in this painting being taken at late afternoon time of day as the sun begins to go down, there are some strong shadows and strong light features to paint. using my color wheel to see which color seems to jump out at me. And that will be the next one I'll add. The late afternoon sunshine was catching with some strong yellow golds and some strong lime greens in some areas of my photograph. So I'm trying to add them at this point. A 
compositionally, you might want to notice some of the things that I'm using. My path is off-center. I generally do not center things exactly in the middle of my painting. If you make your path or your the place where your eye is being led off-center, it tends to make for a more interesting painting. At least that's one of the things that I've been taught. Also, if you're making a path, it's good to lead the eye toward the path and then to stop the eye at the path, as I've done with the two trees that you see on either side. The one on the left is leading us toward what we're seeing in the background and into the path. The one on the right stops us from continuing off the page to the right. So it's like a little block. Just one of the things to consider in setting up a composition that works for you. So what you're seeing at this stage of the painting is I've set up the background, I've set up some middle ground areas, and doing some foreground development. I'm using heavy texturing, particularly in the foreground, because that's where the most detail will show. And I've set up a composition trying to lead the eye into the painting by taking the viewer down a path. I'm using some very bright and very unrealistic colors just because I think they look pretty together. And if, if they don't work together, well then what have I lost? Nothing. But I do like to try new combinations just to see what's going to look particularly interesting. And if you try new things, the way I see it, you're always going to be growing and exploring and maybe improving your work. Something I'm always interested in doing is learning new things in my art. At the edge of the path, I'm now darkening the sides and that tends to contain the path. And now I'm working on the old building. I do believe it's a barn, but it might be an old farmhouse. And it is made of stone. And it does have another structure attached to it. So the paper is dry and I'm sketching in a more detailed area of the painting where I'm not as loose because I want to convey the structure. And the structure has angles and windows, etc., etc. After I have the lines of the building determined and the roof, 
I can fill in where I've left some blank spots and put the trees back that are growing behind the building. Continuing to fill in the structure, continuing to fill in the shadows of the roof line, and putting in some of the bushes and trees that have grown up in front of the building as well. This will be developed more as I get further along in the painting. Detailing, developing, getting the lines of the windows right with the perspective, and grounding the building so that it's darker along the bottom, where the more shadow area would be. Once I'm satisfied that the building is beginning to look like a structure that fits into the environment I'm painting, then I'll move back to the, to the foreground and middle ground and develop the woods and trees more along the path. Now I'm working into the middle ground once more and developing the trees that are lining the path and go along the forest on either side. And you can see I'm setting up a shading that indicates the light is coming from the left and the right side on all these trees will be more shattered. A fallen tree or log is being heavily shaded <clears throat> on the left side. And I'm adding sticks, dirt clumps, and leaf textures. I'm also adding some weeds and some bushes coming up. And the late afternoon sun is lighting some golds up on the left side of this tree, right in the foreground. More than likely, this was a sycamore tree, so it had some strong lights as well as some darks in it. And that allows for some interesting bark and texturing.
I've moved to the far background where I'm adding some tree branches and some distant trees. This is on the edge of the forest before the clearing that houses the old building. As you approach this area, there's a field and there's a large pond. And what I'm doing now is floating my brush all over the composition, adding darks where I think they're needed, adding lights, brights, painting around trees to make the trunk appear to be light. And looking for the shadows on the ground, bordering the path edges with some good strong darks and some leafy textures. And gradually building up color combinations and textural combinations to richen the surface of the painting. There are many different approaches to watercolor. And this just happened to be the one that seemed logical to take with this painting as I was working on it. I did not have a clear cut idea of where it would go. So I'm just allowing my intuition to guide me along and having fun. where I've suggested the pine boughs coming down on the right hand side. I am now coming in and making them darker and brighter. And then lightly spraying some more water on so I can float some more dotty colors over the background. Try to evoke the atmosphere of this day. and the way the light was working with the colors. I've developed a lot more darks all through the middle ground <clears throat> and foreground of this painting. And now I'm beginning to work on the tree that is closest to the edge of the foreground, and that is on the far right side. I'm adding some detail first, some bark, some knot holes, some other various things, because it is the closest to the surface or to the edge of the painting and closest to the viewer. By first painting the details, I can then develop the colors 
on top of them and the details will continue to show through unless I overpaint. If I keep my painting light on top then they will dry and continue to come through the ensuing color layers that I add. The strong dark pine boughs to the left of the foreground tree make the tree appear to come forward. So putting a dark edge against a light edge sets it off and gives it an accent. And I'm adding some strong darks at the bottoms and bases of the other trees as well. And do you get the feeling that my trees are leading the eye toward the path and toward the building that the path actually leads to? because that's exactly what I'm trying to set up is a composition to lead the eye to show a view of a pretty moment and then to lead the eye into the picture and allow the eye of the viewer to travel around the picture and hopefully to enjoy it and to enjoy looking at it And that's what this painting is about, is creating something attractive or pretty or a moment to walk through and be in. And coming in with a very thin brush, I'm painting in some very thin twigs, sticks, distant trees, and detailing, going all through the forest area. And at this point, <clears throat> I've decided that my painting needs some ink work to add some drawing aspect to the paint. So I've brought out several of my permanent markers that are very fine tipped, and I'm beginning to do some drawing work on the trees, on the path, on the building to enhance the art aspect of the moment. It just seemed right to me and it seemed to work. So I'm starting on the right side and working my way across with an ink drawing on top of the watercolor. This can be a very fun way to work. And to me the painting needed just a touch more for detailing to pull it together. And the ink work, since I like to draw, 
Seemed like it might be just the answer I was looking for. So I'm using a loose, sketchy type of approach. I'm outlining some details. I'm putting in some shading with the darker side being a heavier line. Some of the branch work, some of the foliage and laying it out. And if you look at the two sides, right and then left, you could see which one you like better because the left has not yet been developed. This is something you might like to try yourself. If you're ever working on something and it just isn't coming together, add a little drawing on top of it. Why not? Anything goes with art. If you are not trying to be a very highly traditional watercolorist. And in this particular painting, I am not trying to be traditional. I am trying to do what works and what looks right. So I can add a lot more detailing in the foreground with this marker, with this fine tip marker. And I'm trying to draw the eye into the foreground detail by enhancing it and accenting it with the marker. On the light side of the tree, I make a very fine, thin line. On the dark side, I will go over several times to actually darken the line and make it thicker. outlining some of the pine boughs that are on this side of the painting from a pine tree in the distance and you might not have even seen that before because I had not brought out the detail yet but the marker is doing it I think I made the right choice here for myself. It seems to be making the colors glow with the darker coloring around them, almost like a stained glass type of foil. So it works for me. little detailing in the foreground bark of the tree on the far right. And then the other foreground tree that leads the eye into the path.
the very distant trees, I use a very, very thin and light line with a very light hand <clears throat> for this part of the drawing. At this late point, I'm adding some shadows going across the path from the trees. And since it is a colorful painting, I'm using purples and violets, as well as some blues for these shadows. When they combine with the burnt sienna that's already on the path, they make a very nice shade of mauve. And mauve is a color I've been enjoying a lot using. <clears throat> but actually, I do see mauve a lot when I look at a landscape outside. I do some splatter painting in the pathway, too, to add some texture. Little dirt, rocks specks of leaves and I'm doing some outlining in the far right foreground for leaves and for other debris in the pathway. Sign my name and it's done. I hope you enjoyed my video of the path home at Tamanind Park. I hope that you'll subscribe and ring the bell so you won't miss any future videos. There are links to the products I use in the description box below as well, along with links to my Facebook art page, my blog, and my product gallery. I hope you'll check some of them out. And now I'll see you next painting.